Hello, Chuck. Thank you for being with us. Um, let's dive straight in. How did you get started in this industry? Yeah, well, nice to see you, Emily. Um, look, I've been into, uh, involved in a lot of industries in my career, and I say um, agriculture is my favorite by far. I, I, I love the values. I love the purpose of the industry. I actually got started a long time ago. Um, I grew up working as a hired hand on a dairy farm in Canada. <laughs> that was my very first exposure. I was 13 years old. And for many summers, I, I worked on a dairy farm and I fell in love with the lifestyle. In fact, that family became my, really my second family. I went on and did my higher education, my studies, went into different industries, the oil and gas industry, the petrochemical industry. But then when I had a chance about 15 years ago to get back into agriculture, I jumped at it. And I've been involved in the industry ever since, and I'll probably finish my career in it. Well, we can uh, obviously uh, wish that for you, Chuck. In terms of agricultural innovations, what do you see as the biggest breakthrough now that we have uh, to tackle these challenges that are, you know, climate change, uh, biodiversity protection, uh, what are, uh, and, and also food security, um, what do you see as the breakthrough innovation uh, for agriculture? Yeah, I don't know if there's just one. Um, what I love about this industry is it's been innovating for a very long time. And I think the acceleration of the innovation is what's needed. So I would agree we have some significant opportunities and some challenges as an industry. We've got to figure out a way to continue to feed and fuel the world sustainably. And the solution will be innovation, it's going to be creativity, it's going to be new technology, new solutions. And I think the industry is up for it. Now, there are a couple really interesting, I think, dimensions of this that I will call out. So biologicals. I think that uh, finding nature-based or more biological solutions to complement what the industry's already invented, I think will be a growing and a very important part of the future. So we're pretty excited about that as an opportunity to put new solutions, nature-based products and solutions in the hands of farmers around the world. I'd say the other dimension uh, on the seed breeding is gene editing. So when I think about gene editing, I get really excited because we haven't seen the tools that are coming through with gene editing. And really what it is, it's going to allow our plant breeders to precision breed crops fit for purpose, whether that's food security, like you're mentioning, uh, disease resistance, drive productivity and yield. These are all, I think, within the reach of gene editing technology. So that's another really interesting dimension, I think, when it comes to the, the next generation of crop development. So bio, biologicals and gene editing, the big innovations that we see on the horizon now. What, what do you think in this bigger toolbox, this expanding toolbox for farmers, uh, what do you see as being the biggest barrier now to getting that toolbox into the hands of farmers? Yeah, look, um, I'm really pleased with the evolution of the industry in terms of bringing new products to the hands of farmers around the world. I think that what I can see is the pipelines, certainly our pipeline with the industry's pipeline, I think will bring a tremendous set of new products to farmers over the next 10 to 15 years. The one area that needs to keep up with the innovation will be the regulatory framework. So we need smart regulation. All the checks and balances need to be in place, but the system needs to be designed to bring these new products onto the farm. That's gonna be key. I think the other dimension of the regulatory system is really the global framework and how it's integrated. So we can get these products into the hands of a farmer, for example, in the US, but also in Latin America, Europe, Asia, Africa, with speed. Because the challenges that we've got that are facing us to really feed this world and also allow solutions when it comes to climate change and sustainability, we're going to have to take less time to bring those products into the hands of farmers. And the only way to do that is to have the products ready to go and have a very smart, sophisticated and integrated regulatory system. So uh, a, a, a speeded up uh, regulatory system that's co coherent and cohesive worldwide, that's a great message I think to bring to policymakers very much for being with us, Chuck. Thank I you, appreciate Emily. it. Thank you.